Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back into the cockpit. Waypoints Aviation, back in our Airbus A320. Quick question, you guys want to master the VOR? Let's do it. Alrighty, so, um, as stated in the intro of this video, um, the VOR approach is something we do uh, in the Airbus A320 and it's one of my favorites, absolute favorites because there's two ways to do a VOR here in, uh, in the Airbus A320. So one of the ways to do it is what we call the managed way, all right? The managed way is where you program the whole thing into the box and basically you've programmed the entire VOR approach and basically, as long as you keep everything managed and you set the parameters on the FCU correctly, the aircraft is going to do the VOR approach fully automated with the autopilot on. And it's going to, it's basically going to, you know, intercept and line itself up and, and even do the descent on the VOR profile all the way down to minimums. Now, the VOR is considered a non precision approach. So once you get to minimums, you then have to disconnect and hand fly the aircraft down to the runway. Sometimes a VOR can bring you straight in towards the runway, sometimes it's slightly offset. Um, which is, which is kind of why I like it because it's, it, you know, it makes me, it makes me uh, have to uh, disconnect and hand fly the aircraft. It's why I became a pilot, so I could fly an aeroplane. <laughs> um, so that's the manage point of the VOR approach. Now the second way would be managed selected, alright? Now with the managed and selected, what you could do is you could have the, the nav, the, the lateral navigation be managed by the computer, all right? And then you manually go ahead and uh, dial the descent selectedly, all right? Uh, very similar to how we did the ILS, uh, so the managed selected ILS approach the other day, all right? I'll link that video in the description below. And then there's the selected selected method, all right, where you have to manually, the autopilot will be on, but I'll have to manually dial uh, the heading and the track. We'll be doing it in track FPA, so the track that I want the aircraft to fly. And I have to manipulate the altitude and the descent for the approach. That's, that's pretty much a very manual way of doing um, the VOR approach in the Airbus A320. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. And then the third one I want to demonstrate is a DME arc. Now, a lot of you have asked me to do this video and I do apologize, it's taken me a while to get back down to it. But today we're going to, uh, we're going to cover the DME arc. I'm going to explain what the DME arc is and I'm going to demonstrate the DME arc approach right here in this video for you. So stay tuned guys, that's all coming up in just a bit you can always uh, skip ahead to the chapters you want to watch uh, using the uh, the whole chapter thingy at the bottom of the screen um, or if you go to the description uh, box you're gonna find uh, links to the actual chapters that you want to fast forward to in case you in case you're already good with other parts of your approaches and you just want to watch something specific feel free guys thank you so much again for coming on board let's jump right into the video as a reminder for those of you who are not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And for those who are already subscribed, thank you. And um, be sure to like and subscribe uh, at the end of it. So guys, without any further ado, let's jump right into uh, the rest of the video and let's brief our approach initially for the managed VOR. All right, guys. So basically a VOR, for those of you who do not know, and I'm pretty sure most of you do, a VOR is basically short, and by the way, I'm on the Wiki, Wikipedia page, and I'll link this page um, down in the description below for, for you guys to have a read a little bit later. But in, in, in simplest forms, it's basically a navigational beacon, all right? VOR stands for Very High Frequency Omni Range Station, all right? That's what the VOR is, is, um, is, it stands for, all right? Now, the, the, the fact that it says omni range is, is what really makes this a very useful tool because it's, it's an omni range in the sense that it can go in all directions, all right? And you've got the various types of VORs, okay? And the VOR DME is, is the one that we really, really want to pay attention to because that, that VOR also gives us distance measuring um, 
uh, capability where we can literally see on our screens exactly how far away we are from that VOR. And and uh, the VOR is is usually, you know, it's, it's a long range beacon and it's really, really good um, you know, to intercept from far away if you want to add some accuracy to your navigation and stuff like that. And one of the things that I like about the VOR is I think of it like a funnel, all right? So as the funnel grows, it, like it gets wider, the higher you are. So that's why the VOR range can be determined like right over here, all right? You've got the terminal VOR, so from from 1,000 feet till about 12,000 feet, you'll be able to pick up the VOR range from about 25 miles away, all right? Then you've got the low altitude, which goes up to 18,000 feet, and that will be able to be, you, you, can, you can pick that up from 14 miles away, nautical miles, all right? Now, if you wanted to go long range, you would have to be in the in the range of about, say, you know, at from altitudes up to fourteen thousand five hundred feet, you can get you can capture the VOR from seventy miles away, and then if you go all the way up from eighteen to forty five thousand feet, you can literally pick it up from a hundred and thirty nautical miles away. All right, so this helps to navigate cross country. Uh, in the olden days, when before we had GPS, uh, you know, navigational points and stuff, we literally, uh, well, not we, I mean, I, I, was, I was pretty much too young <laughs> for that. But in the older days, they would they would place these beacons, beacons like, like these, all right, right across the country or right across uh, different states. And all you had to do was you navigated from one VOR point to another VOR point, okay? And, and and that's basically you, you you tuned in the frequency into your radio panel and and you, you your your needles pointed in the direction of the VOR and you flew in that direction or you gave yourself um, you gave yourself a, a radial a specific direction that you wanted to intercept it from and you flew uh, and then once you got to that VOR you tuned in the frequency of the next one and that's basically uh, how that works. All right, that's that's pretty much how we did point-to-point -point navigation in the older days. Now we've got we've got uh, GPS and, and satellite and everything, so it's you know we don't really need to use that, but we do use VORs as a secondary backup. And and of course, in in the case of today, essentially speaking, we've got a VOR approach. We're back in Russell Kema, and today what we want to do is we're going to focus on the VORs. Okay. The VORs are, are really a wonderful, wonderful approach. It's one of my favorites to do. And uh, looking at the weather today in Russell Kamer, the winds are out of one to zero degrees, 13 knots. We got a, it's a nice cool 40 degrees Celsius with a 25 degree dew point, which means it's gonna be quite hazy out there. Um, ceiling and visibility conditions are okay. So nothing too much to complain about in terms of the weather. But coming back to our charts, you can see that in Russell Kema, we do in fact have uh, airports, uh, runways 1-6 right over there, and you've got runway 3-4. So last time for the ILS approach, because this airport only has an ILS on runway 3-4, I was doing the uh, runway 3-4 approach, okay? But today's winds are favoring runway 1-6, which, uh, which is what I'm uh, interested in today. Coming back to the approaches, uh, you can see for runway 16 we have an RNAV, RNP, and then we've got VOR, Zulu, or Yankee, all right? And the cool thing about this is, this is gonna force me to really, really, really pay attention, okay? Because as you can see, for us, as a category Charlie aircraft, all right, the approach that we do, the VOR approach, uh, starts at the VOR for category Charlie and Delta at 4,000 feet, all right? which is right over here at the VOR. Then we go outbound 001 degrees. By the way, I'm referring to plate number 13-1, effective the 25th of March, VOR Zulu or Yankee runway 16 Russell came up, all right? The uh, frequency for that VOR is uh, 113.6, Romeo Alpha Victor is its identifier, but we will call it, we will, we'll call it by its name, which is the Russell Kema VOR, okay? Final course is 163 degrees, and the final approach fix is 1,800 feet. That's about 1,736 above ground level. And our decision height is 440 um, um, feet, all right? 
and uh, the airport elevation is 94 with a runway elevation of 64 and the minimum safe altitude is 2500 on the western side 8900 in this section right over here which is the uh, northeastern area and in the southeast we've got 5100 and that's mainly because of the Jebel Jace mountains that we have right over here by the way, if you're ever in the UAE, come winter time, my family and I always go camping over here in these mountains, and it's absolutely beautiful. So yeah, sorry, I digress. Okay, back to the approach. Okay, so now we uh, so we basically start at the VOR, right over there, and we go outbound zero zero one degrees for about thirteen miles. While doing that, we descend down to two thousand feet, and then we make a left hand turn descending back to an inbound course of 163 degrees descending to 1800 feet and then over here at 7.9 miles uh, we start a three degree descent down to our minimums which is 440 feet above sea level all right the rvr required is 1300 meters we've got 8000 meters of visibility today so we're pretty much we qualify to do this approach and as always the missed approach uh, procedure would be to climb um, to category A O Bravo for, well for us it's category Charlie Delta so climb to 4000 straight ahead via the VOR 163 um, to Darto then turn right to join a holding at the VOR maximum speed 230 knots so basically we go 163 degrees outbound from the VOR to Darto or basically 5.4 miles away from the VOR and then we make an inbound turn to the right towards the VOR and we're basically going to intercept from uh, from this heading okay so we it's like an inbound inbound intercept of i would say 360 and then we're going to go 180 and then basically that's how the holding works okay so the plan is i'm going to initially get us airborne and i'm going to come to the holding point here okay once i'm in the hold i'm going to basically demonstrate a managed approach all right where i'll do this fully managed all right once I've got, once I get to minimums, I'm going to initiate a go around, and then I'm going to come back to the hold, and then I'm going to do the same approach, fully selected. So you'll get to see me do this in the most manual of ways and in the most automated of ways. All right, and then after that, I'm going to explain to you this DME arc and how do we do a DME arc? There's you can do it managed you can do it selected, all right? So there's two ways to do that. So I'm gonna explain that as well in in the video, in, in, in the rest of the video. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys, let's go ahead, get the airplane started, program in our MCDU, and uh, we're gonna get going, get airborne, all right? Cool, all right, see you guys there. All right, guys, back in the cockpit. Um, pretty much, I've done programming the uh, MCDU, and just to show you what I did, I basically came to the initial page. Uh, I got the uh, runway, Russell Kema, Russell Kema, put Russell Kema as our alternate as well. Got our waypoints aviation flight number in there as well, cost index, and we're going to 5,000 feet, all right? Then I came to the flight plan mode, and what I did was I simply selected runway 16 for our departure, and no SIDs, okay? And then what I did was I, after that, I got the 1579 for the <clears throat> for the thrust reduction acceleration, and then I went ahead in there and in the next waypoint I put the Russell Kema VOR, and then I went ahead into the Russell Kema VOR and I selected a hold. Now, as we know, this requires a this is an inbound of 360 degrees to the VOR and it's a left hand turn okay you can actually see it on the chart right there I hope the camera gets it up clearly so it's basically inbound 360 and then outbound 180 and it's a left hand turn for the VOR so that's why I programmed that in there okay and uh, then and so once I take off basically I'm taking off and then at 1500 feet uh, I basically turn and intercept the VOR, uh, uh, the uh, yep, the the Russell Kemo VOR, and I go into a hold, and then after that I can program uh, the rest of the descent, and uh, basically get get the aircraft going. All right, so 
that's basically what I did there on the flat plan page. Then I came over to secondary flat plan, made a copy of the active rad nav, and I hard tuned the Rasa Kimo VOR on both sides. So right now it shows M, which is basically it's manually tuned in and locked into that. And I've got the Rasa Kimo VOR on my points there, and that's going to show me my DME, my distance from the VORs at all times. After that, I came to the Init Bravo page. We've got 59.3 tons today on board the aircraft, as well as 27.9 CG, five tons of fuel, gonna be plenty for our exercises. And then finally, I came over to the performance page. We're doing a flaps one with the up 0 0.5, a flex takeoff of 68 degrees, and those are our speeds for today, all right? So that's pretty much done. I can also come here and put Oscar Mike Romeo Kilo. Uh, one six uh, into that point there that's going to give us a little bit of greater accuracy and of course as always our GPS is primary accuracy is high everything's looking good coming up onto the uh, glare shield uh, we're gonna set up we come back to arc 10 miles manage manage 4000 is uh, going to be our initial climb and uh, basically everything's set up on that side as well we did all of our checks uh, radio frequencies, everything's tuned in, trust levers are idle, engine masters are off, and the um, mode selector is normal, speed brake is stored, park and brake on, rudder trim zero, and the flaps at zero, gears down, tree green, nose wheel and skid steering is on. Okay, so that would basically complete my checks and the setup of the aircraft. I can now do a cockpit preparation checklist. Gear, bin, can, gear pins and covers are removed, fuel quantity is set to five tons. Um, the seatbelt signs are on already and the IRSs are in the nav position But there's another way you can check you come over to data and you go to IRS monitor and there you go All three IRSs are in nav. So that's how you check that as well on your MCDU and the last thing would be the barrel reference which is 9098 reading I would say 80 feet all right so and that's cross checked on all three sides so that's the cockpit preparation checklist complete gonna get the beacon going get the strobes to auto that's gonna get the ground crew to close up our doors and uh, while that's happening I can go ahead and do the before start checklist which is the parking brake it's still on I'll release it once I'm clear to do so uh, takeoff speeds and trust, they are in the box, all inserted, 145, 47, 50, and you'll see them on our speed tape as well. Next thing we want to do is our windows and doors, they're still being closed, one more door to be closed, one more slide to be armed, and then we're good to go. So I would say that is done, almost, yep, all good, and the beacon is on so the before start checklist is completed so i'm gonna go ahead and get straight away to pushing back starting the engines you've seen me doing that a dozen times so i'm not gonna that's not gonna be in the video today uh but i am going to go ahead taxi down take off and uh i'll get back to you guys when i'm inbound to the russell came of you are okay so i'll see you guys there Alrighty, we are airborne and we're at 4,000 feet and we are in our hold right over the Russell Kimo VOR. We're just making our turn for the inbound, which is going to be 360 degrees and then we'll go outbound basically a minute and we're just going to stay right here until we're ready for the approach. So the first thing we're going to do is the managed approach, okay, fully managed. Now, uh, if you do not know the difference between managed and selected, I'm going to link a video in the description below. You can, guys can uh, watch that uh, to understand it. But basically what it is, is when you see these dashes and dots, that means the aircraft is in managed mode, which means all the information that the aircraft is using to laterally and, and vertically navigate itself is coming from the box. Now, if I was to pull it out, for example, then it goes out of managed and it goes into selected mode, which means I am manually selecting a speed. Classic example, let's just say right now our speed is set at about 213 knots. Say 210, 213, all right? That's managed and it's magenta because it's managed, all right? Now, if I go ahead and pull this knob here, you will notice that it has now become blue, which means it's now selected. And instead of dashes and a dot, we've got numbers. So now I have selected manually the speed that I want. So if I want to increase this to 230 knots, basically I'm overriding the data in the computer and I'm telling the aircraft I want 230 knots and that's exactly what it's doing. It's increasing the, uh, it increased the trust in the engines and now it's giving me 230 knots. 
all right? But managed, if I post managed, now it's basically gonna go back to what the aircraft thinks according to the data in the box, what we need, which is 213. So that's what it's going to do. That's the difference in manage and select it. Now, I'm going to do a managed approach into this VOR for runway 16, all right? As briefed, we're going to go to the VOR, and from the VOR, we're going to go outbound 13 miles, descending to 2,000, then down to 1,800, and then down on a 3-degree descent. Now, this is super simple, all right? All you have to do is come down here, okay, and go into your destination. Make sure it's Russell Kema, the correct airport. Our arrival and then I'm going to go the VUR Zulu for runway 16 okay and there it is the VUR Zulu now if I select VUR Zulu if I go into plan mode the VUR Zulu just gives us the approach from egg map right there but I want to come via the v the russell kimo vor outbound i want to do all that all right so to select that and to make sure that appears in here you've got to come to the wires you see that there so i've just select the vor zulu for one six now i'm going to go wire and there's the russell kimo vor right there so if i select that now look now it actually has the whole thing if you come to the vor you go outbound 13 miles, you swing around, and you come back in. That is how you select that entire procedure in the box, all right? So I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna go insert, and now what's gonna happen is, as I cycle through this, because I'm in plan mode, I can cycle through it, I'll go, I'll zoom in a little bit. As I cycle through, you can see, my approach starts at the hold, then I come to the Rosakima VOR, and then I go outbound for 13 miles, descending to 2000, and then I make the turn towards egg map, a left-hand turn, and basically come down to Nomdi, which is where I can start my descent. And at Nomdi, I have to be 1800 feet, and then I go ahead and descend down to our minimums. So that's the beauty of it, that's how you do that. All right, so that's done there. And on the progress, we're looking good there. So right now, so I'm gonna do the hat right now. Flight plan is done, right now is done because we got the Russell Kimo VOR tuned in. I can't put my final approach, my, uh, my outbound course initially, which is 001, okay? And then I'll show you why, why I'm doing that and what I'm referring to uh, later. Now the next thing I wanna do is come over the progress, check that everything's correct there. GPS is primary, accuracy high, all good. Performance, we go to the next phase, next phase, and I've already inserted the uh, the weather information over there. What I do need now is my minimums, which is 440 for the, for the approach, okay? So that is done over there. Now in the performance side, it's done. Fuel predictions, all good. I like to give myself 1.5 and secondary flight plan copy the active flight plan and that's the hat done all right the approach is done so all we have to do now is as we're making the turn back towards the VOR we can now go ahead and initiate this and uh, yeah and then everything is pretty much good to go so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit the approach I'm gonna activate the approach phase that's gonna cause the aircraft to slow down to its green dot speed giving me enough room to deploy my flaps as I require. And I can go ahead now and do the approach checklist, which is barrel reference is what is 998 reading 4,000 feet right now, as you can see. The uh, seatbelt signs are still on. The uh, minimums are a barrel of 440. And the auto brakes, I'm not gonna select any auto brakes for this one. And the engine mode selector is normal. So that's the approach checklist complete. And we're pretty much good to go now on this entire approach. So all we have to do is to exit the hold, you come over here, you go to flight plan, and you click exit. All right. And now the aircraft is going to go straight to the Rasakema VOR. As you can see, it's now inbound to the Rasakema VOR, and it knows what it has to do next, which is fly outbound. 001 degrees now because this is fully managed what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna dial 1800 okay I'll keep the 1800 there I'm gonna come to the Rosakimo VOR 
and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna make sure that it's got all those parameters in there okay the hold is good it's got everything it needs so basically now I just want to make sure that it's gonna hold 4000 at the VOR which is what I'm putting in there as the altitude constraint answer okay now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push 1800 manage descent as you can see I got altitude constraint it knows it has to maintain 4000 at the VOR so it's gonna remain 4000 even though I've selected 1800 and I push it in it, it knows it has to stay this is the beauty of managed all right it knows it has to stay at 4000 and then when it crosses the VOR which is literally going to happen in a few seconds it's then imme immediately going to go for its next altitude constraint there we go it's now going to descend and it's got its next altitude constraint which is 2000 feet all right 13 miles out 2000 feet so it knows what it has to do and it's doing it so it's all right there it's got the constraint of 2000 it's trying to keep its vertical profile to make sure it does it and as you can see right now we've got we've got 26 track miles 25 track miles to go now guys when I say track miles track means the actual track that we have to fly so if I can go straight to the straight to the VOR from here or straight to the runway we're literally just from the runway we're literally 1.3 miles away from the runway but track means if I go from here to here and here to here and here to here and here to here that is my track so that gets calculated here and that's a distance of 23 nautical miles all right so if ever you see me reference track miles that's what I'm talking about in this uh, in, the, in, in the approach and look at that the Jebel Jace mountains are coming into view but I digress let, 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 let's focus right over here <laughs> all right guys so so now as you can see the aircraft is doing a pretty good job the aircraft has placed itself on that outbound track of 001 degrees and uh, basically is descending it knows that the constraint is 2000 so it's not going to go below 2000 until it gets to until it crosses um egg map and from egg map it will then it then knows it has to go down to 1800 so it will then descend after that keeping our profile very good nice and steady everything's looking good approach checklist is completed and we're coming up in uh, coming up over downtown Russell Kima actually and the, this area here are where you find the, the mangroves uh, and then right out there is the Arabian Sea and generally I like to I like to uh, rent out lighter aircrafts and uh, and fly right across this um, this coastline and usually we see uh, jellyfishes and dolphins as we get closer to the Oman border and uh, also in these waters uh, you would find hammerhead sharks and you can see them so clearly in these turquoise waters so uh, yeah guys if you get the chance visit the UAE come come to come to Rosakema it's a beautiful beautiful place uh, you won't be sorry <laughs> all right coming down on our distance which is 17 nautical miles now the aircraft is doing a pretty good job keeping our vertical profile so I'm pretty happy with that once we get to 15 miles I'm gonna start the uh, I'm gonna start the um, configuration of the aircraft absolutely beautiful me like it all right there's 15 miles away okay so let's go ahead check our speed we're good for flaps one so let's go ahead and give ourselves flaps one all right flaps one's coming in the aircraft is slowing down still maintaining its vertical profile very nicely done starting the turn from the 13 mile point from Russell Kimo VOR back to egg map right over the Arabian Sea I wonder if there's a way to simulate sea life <laughs> in Microsoft Flight in 2020 let me know in the comments below <laughs> alright guys flaps 2 is available speed check so speed check and flaps 2 lovely all right it still knows it's got to maintain 2000 because of the altitude restriction of 2000 at egg map so we're not descending even though i've got 1800 over there in the uh 
uh, in the FCU. Airbus is smart, it knows where its limitations are. Alright, aircraft is slowing down now and as I approach egg map, I will be arming the approach so that the aircraft will start its descent and uh, basically make its way down towards the runway. So we're just waiting on that. Thirteen miles to go. The aircraft is maintaining F speed now, which is a little slow, but it's fine. We'll be all right. I can always go if I want to increase my speed a little bit. I can always go back up the flaps one, and that will raise our speed again. At least it should, <laughs> in theory. Yep, it's going to take us back to our S speed. So we, you know, we're not gonna die of old age before we get there. All right, nicely maintaining our vertical profile as well. Lateral profile is steady. There's our SP, and we're maintaining that until we get closer to egg map, which is just about 2.6 miles away. Turning back in towards the uh, coastline. Dubai will be that way. All right, now we're just about we're less than 1.5 miles away from egg map, so I'm gonna go ahead and go flaps two now. Let the aircraft slow down. Alright, there we go. Aircraft is slowing down. Speed trend telling us exactly where our speed is going to be in the next 10 seconds. That's, that's what the yellow arrow represents. And I'm going to arm the approach. So, approach is armed. We've got speed, final approach. The aircraft will now basically follow this vertical profile all the way down to minimums. Now, just about 100 feet above minimums, I'm going to go ahead and initiate a go around because I don't want the aircraft to disconnect the autopilot on me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Here we go. We're coming up on our final approach fix, which is uh, a waypoint called Nomdi. There it is right there, Nomdi. And that's when we're going to start the approach, which is going to be a three de degree descent approach. All right. The inbound track is 163 degrees and if I come here, I put 163 in the course on the Russell Kema VOR and check it out. If I come to VOR, look at that. The aircraft is maintaining a nice 163 track all the way down towards the Russell Kema VOR. Brilliant. Alright, time to get the gear down. Landing gear is coming down and I can go ahead and select flaps 3. Two thousand checked. As we get closer, I do not know why it's clicking all the time. Uh -huh. As long as all the systems are working well, lights can come on as well. And we'll arm the speed brake as well. And once the aircraft is established on the descent, I'm gonna go ahead and set the go around altitude, which for us as a category Charlie aircraft is 4,000 feet. Here we go, coming up right on Nomdi. And here we go, we're going for the, for the descent gonna dial in 4,000 right over there 4,000 set for the go around the aircraft is descending and following its vertical profile I'm gonna go flaps full and the landing checklist is completed which is ECAM memo landing no blue landing checklist completed guys all right here we go following our profile nice and steady Aircraft is slightly high, but you can see it's adjusting its vertical speed to maintain it. Uh, 
at about five miles we want to be 880 feet so we're coming up on five miles very soon let's see if it does it 1,000 1,000 checked here's 5.3 5.2 5.1 five miles and we're slightly high but we're correcting for it so we're not too high so that's okay so it's still all right still good all right descending right down looking good and basically I've got my runway inside as well so technically I could disconnect and land the aircraft but for the sake of our exercise we are not gonna do that today we're gonna go ahead and initiate a uh, go around guys so going around in just uh, hundred above. Yep, gonna go ahead and initially go around. Go around happening in three, two, one. Minimum. Toga. Okay, man. Toga SRS. Go around track. Go around flap selected. One flap up for flap three. Aircraft is climbing away. We've got F speed, so we're gonna go flaps one now, and I'm gonna go positive rate gear up. Landing gear is coming in. aircraft is climbing away pretty quickly and that my friends is how we do a managed VOR so I'm gonna head back over to the to the VOR and I'm going to now choose okay we got lever climb so power levers come back two clicks lever climb trust climb open climb auto trust white so I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm going to come back to the VOR and then from there we're gonna go and do the same approach but this time it's going to be selected selected so it's gonna be up to me to make sure I do it correctly <laughs> okay see you guys back at the VOR all right guys we're back in the hold and we're just making our turn back towards the Russell Kemo VOR right now and to do the selected selected approach what we have to do is I'm gonna come back to VOR uh, on our navigation display as you can see I've set on the rat nav uh, inbound course of north and that's exactly what the aircraft is doing it's pulling the needle in and making us nice and straight on the north inbound so that's pretty much good for us right there and as for the procedure I have to maintain 4,000 feet until I get to the VOR and then I'm gonna go outbound 001 so let the aircraft establish itself right now and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go track FPA so I have great accuracy I'm gonna pull and then I'm gonna make it north okay 360 now as you can see the needle is slightly to the left so I can just go a couple of degrees to the left just to pull that needle in we're just three miles away from that needle uh, from the VOR so it's not gonna take us long to get that thing in there and when I get to about two miles I'm just gonna keep it steady on an inbound course of north which is now happening two miles all right so now I come back to 360 and now my next intercept is gonna be outbound 001 okay so I'm gonna go ahead and put 001 on standby all right so as soon as I cross the VOR I'm gonna put the 001 in there and then I'm gonna adjust the needle to make sure it stays at 001 outbound and then the next thing would be to descend down to 2,000 feet by by 13 miles away so we're at the VOR Things are going to cross over right now. There we go. Okay, 001. I'm going to put 001 in there and 001 in there as well. And now I just want to pull that needle in. It's slightly to the right. So I'm just going to go a couple of degrees to the right just to pull this needle in. And once the needle is right in the center, I'm going to come back to 001. So I'll go about 003, two degrees off. And I'm gonna start my descent now to 2,000. So let's set 2,000 in there and pull. And we've got trust idle, open descent. I can also go ahead, activate the approach phase. Everything's looking good over there. Barrel, the barrel reference is also correct, so it's all good. All right, there's the needle nice and center. So 001 set, so the aircraft will maintain it. And the cool thing about track FPA is it maintains uh, factored for the wind. 
So even though the wind direction is pushing me from the left, it will still maintain 001 for me, track the, the, the actual direction of the aircraft, you know. So that's looking good. We've started our descent. Approach checklist uh, can be done now, which is the barrel reference is 440. Seat belts are on, minimums. Uh, sorry, bar reference is 998, uh, 3550 descending right now. Uh, seat belts are on, minimums are 440, and uh, the auto brakes are off, as well as the engine mode selector is normal. So, that's the approach checklist completed, 001, we're 6 miles outbound, and we're descending nicely uh, towards, um, towards our target altitude, which is 2000. Now, once we get to 13 miles away, we're gonna be turning inbound to the left to come back inbound to the to the VOR on a 163 radial. So that's gonna happen pretty soon as we get closer to it. So as of right now, don't have to do much, just have to relax <laughs> and just monitor my instruments. And then when we get to 7.9 DME, we have to start our descent, which is a three degree descent. But I'm gonna start one mile ahead of it. So at 8.9, I'm gonna start the descent down towards our minimums uh, to, yeah, uh, on, on the three degree descent, all right? So now we're 9.4 miles away, maintaining a nice clean 001 outbound. And everything is looking good. There's 10 miles. Now I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be maintaining this. So for the next couple of miles, I need to get ready for my descent. So let's go ahead and give ourselves flaps one. That's gonna help us with slowing the aircraft down. Speed all star, we've reached 2000. We're at 11.5 DME and all is well. Now, in anticipation for that 13 DME, I'm gonna put 163 on standby. In fact, I'm gonna put it in there now and 163 on the other side as well. And now, as, as you can see, that's now showing me 163 radial inbound towards the VOR. There's 13 DME. I'm now gonna turn the track knob and I'm gonna place that little hat, that little blue triangle, this little guy right over here, right over that arrow, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it there so that I can stay offset and then that's going to help me pull the arrow in. All right, if I turn that off, you can see I'm going to pull the arrow in and then once the arrow is perfectly in the center, I can come to 163. Now I'm waiting for 13 DME. We've gone outbound just a little bit. So once I get to 13 DME, then I'm going to start my descent down to 1800 which I have to be at just about 7.9 miles away from the VOR. Now, as you can see, as the physical arrows and the course are getting close together, this needle is gonna come alive, which I believe it is right now, it is moving. So I'm gonna gently move the hat in as the needle moves. And that's gonna help me track that line perfectly. Not too, not too shallow and not too, uh, and, and not too wide. Not too steep, not too shallow. Looking good. So you see, as the arrow moves, I'm moving the hat right over it, just to make sure I'm staying with the natural movement of that needle. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself flaps two now. And now I'm coming up on 13 DME, so I can go ahead and dial 1800 and pull, and there we go, speed all star, 1800, the aircraft will descend down to it. Needles come even closer gonna continue moving that as we go along matching that hat to the arrow it's as simple as that guys it's literally that simple and when all is said and done I should be um, I should be basically on a perfect 163 inbound towards the VOR now I'm anticipating I've reached 1800 so what I want to do, as soon as I'm locked in at 1800, which is ALT, I'm going to go ahead and push the VS, keep it at zero, so the aircraft will stay there. And at 8.9, I'm going to dial minus 3.0 here and let the aircraft do its descent. So I've got FPA zero, the aircraft will maintain this altitude for me. Needle's coming much closer, I can bring it in. So I'm just going to bring it in, just kind of match that needle. It's pretty much almost on the 163. 
so I'm gonna go one six three right there on the course one six three and the needle is right in the middle perfect we are good to go so now we're coming up on a point where we're going to be descending very soon so I'm gonna go ahead and give us gear down flaps three that'll that'll set us up so now we are pretty much established one six three needle right down the center looking at our map you can see the aircraft is perfectly established there as well coming up on 9.0 and I'm gonna go now 8.9 I'm gonna dial minus 3.0 so it's good it's gonna take time for the aircraft to start its descent so here we go the aircraft is now leaning down towards three degrees descent and I'm gonna go ahead and set the go around altitude as well which is 4,000 there we go and now I'm going flaps full and the landing checklist is completed so now at six miles we have to be 1196 miles all right so we're coming up we're descending at a nice steady 700 feet a minute uh, we're 7.4 miles and we're 1400 hopefully we could we, we should stay on the profile there's seven miles continue our descent six miles is one one nine or six all right so let's see if uh, if this works for us we're maintaining three degrees coming up on 6.5 looking good 6.3 6.2 6.1 1 we're slightly lower than where we should be but, but that's okay we're very very slightly low okay I'm gonna monitor this descent at five miles we need to be 880 so we're just keeping on monitoring that you can see the runway is coming up but we're gonna we're gonna be staying focused on our instruments here here's five miles 880 on the dot perfect just slightly lower by about 30 feet which is perfect so I can keep it at minus 3.0 and we're good four miles we need to be 564 let's see if we make that here comes 4.5 4.1 right on the money guys perfect we're 100 above minimum so it's time to do our go around push in on our go toga on. go around flaps minimum. come on flaps flaps three man toga SRS Go around track, pause the rate, gear up. And that, guys, is how you do a selected, selected approach down to our minimums on our VOR approach. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and be back towards the VOR. I'm gonna go flaps one now, flaps one. And uh, now the next thing to do would be a DME arc. All right, guys, get back to you when I'm ready to do that. All right, guys, it's time to talk about the DME arc. All right, so it sounds pretty complex, and in a way it is, <laughs> but it's, it doesn't have to be. If it's explained properly and if you truly understand the procedure of how to do it, uh, it doesn't have to be uh, rocket science. All right, so I'm looking at uh, this plate, which is the Rasakema plate 13-1 effective the 25th of March VOR Zulu and Yankee for runway 16 okay now we did uh, we did our selected selected approach and we took we we did the missed approach procedure came to Darto came back around and as you can see we're basically hovering around this area in our hold around the Rosa Kemo VOR okay now a DME arc basically is this it's basically an arc which forms a distance that you have to maintain around the around a VOR okay now the VOR here in 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 subject is the Rasakema VOR right over here so the procedure of doing a DME arc is we would have to maintain this 13 DME arc away from the Rasakema VOR all the way here making sure we maintain this nice 13 dme circle all the way till we get to this point over here where we would then come down this way just after egg map and then intercept the vor 
from uh, from an inbound course of 163 degrees and then do the rest of the uh, the procedure okay now you can do this one of two ways you can do it managed you can do it selected selected obviously being a little bit more harder <laughs> or a little bit more trickier now the minimums are going to remain the same 440 the final approach fix remains the same at 7.9 dme the difference is we're not going to do this procedure out here which is what we just did earlier we're not going to go to the to the vor out 13 miles swing around descend 2000 come back and then join the final approach uh, final approach what we want to do is we need to go from the Russell Kim of VOR over here to this waypoint Genak. All right, Genuk, Genak. And it sits at a radial of 235, a direction radial of 235, 13 miles away from the Russell Kim of VOR. Okay, so basically we go there. From there, we have to go over maintaining 2,100 feet all the way down to this point over here which sits at 13 miles at a radial of 300 from the VOR okay so to do this we can do it managed we can do it selected the managed way would require that I choose Genok and then the aircraft will put Genok in there and then it should in theory put this point over here as well and then after that the next waypoint would be not me and then the rest of it can be done managed all right which probably might happen but in case it doesn't do it then what we have to do is we're gonna have to manually insert it in there okay but what we're gonna do now is well, I'm going to show you two ways okay we're gonna do it from the box making sure that the waypoints have been inserted automatically by the database of the aircraft okay this waypoint should be delta 300 mic all right so genok delta 300 mic and then 2000 feet maintain 2000 until we get over there and then descend until we get to this point over here which is another point at 335 radial from the vor okay i don't think it's going to do that for sure i'm pretty sure it's going to do uh, Genak and the Delta 300 mic, but I'm not sure if it's going to do the other one. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure, but we'll find out, okay? And then what I'm going to do is, once we do that, I'm going to initiate a go around, all right, right over there, and then I'm going to come, and then I'm going to come back to the hold, and then I'm going to try and do this again, but this time I'm going to insert these waypoints manually, all right? And, uh, and uh and and basically uh i'll be entering these the, these waypoints manually okay into this into the into the box and then have the aircraft follow that all right so let's uh, let's jump right into it and let's uh, let's let's get this done all right here we are in the hold over the russell came vor maintaining 4000 feet and what i want to do now is i want to change the approach because we still have the the regular approach in there right uh, this one right over here so I want to change it to the arc so what I what we do is we come down over here and we go into our destination we go to arrival I've already selected the VOR for runway 16 now I go instead of the Rasekimo VOR for the wire I'm gonna go wires and we want to look at Genak all right so we choose Genak so now it's the Russell Kima VOR 416 via Genok. And if you look at our plan mode, you can see very clearly that it's actually done it. It's put Genok in there. It's put the D300 mic waypoint in there. And if I insert it, it's also placed, um, it's also placed egg map and the rest of it so it's basically going from there over to egg map and it's going to do the the, the approach all right so that's looking pretty good for us uh, as a procedure and it's also got the constraints in so again we want to be 2100 feet which we can insert to make sure we do that and then at the uh, at uh, delta 300 mic it wants us to be at 2000 onwards okay 
So we're going to basically maintain 2100 until we get there. So that's fine. And uh, after that, we so it's maintaining 2100. And then at egg map, we want to be 2000. All right. So we just double check that. And as you can see, we have 2000 there as well. Then we've got the 1800 and so on for our descent. So everything's looking nice and good. All we have to do now is initiate this approach. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the direct. I'm gonna choose Genok, all right? That's gonna create an intercept for Genok, all right? And then I am going to confirm it by pushing insert. The aircraft is now going to Genok and I'm gonna dial 2000 in there. In fact, I'm gonna put 1800 in there because the aircraft will know what to do as managed. And I'm gonna go ahead and push that. All right, like I can act with the approach phase. And now I'm gonna go ahead and push that. And there we go. We've got speed, descent, alt in magenta. It's got 2100 as its constraint. Now, as we go to Genok, it's going to maintain the distance of DME 13 right across, okay? So that's how we do it in the manage format. So we're just gonna monitor and make sure the aircraft does it. We're flying right now towards Genok. We're 13 miles away, which is exactly what it should say because we're right at the Rosakim of EOR. When we get to Genok, we're gonna follow this nice little curve all the way down towards, um, towards the next waypoint, which is gonna be ECMAP, and then, over, and then back in towards the Rosakim of EOR. So let's just monitor that and see how it works. The aircraft is descending nicely down towards its uh, profile of 2100. We've got 1800 in the FCU, but because of the constraints that are there in the box, it knows exactly what it has to do and when it has to descend. All right, so as we approach Genok, um, we're going to just monitor it, okay? So I'll get back to you very shortly when we're at Genok. All right, here we are, we're approaching Genok. And as you can see, the aircraft wants to maintain that 13 DME uh, curve right around it. So we're reaching our altitude of 2100, we're just 2700 and descending. And the aircraft is going to make a turn and establish itself on that 13 DME. Now to give myself a little bit of greater accuracy, what I can do is I can paint a little picture on my screen which is coming down here i'll go to fix info i'm gonna put the romeo alpha victor uh dme in fact i'm gonna put uh i'm gonna put uh romeo alpha yeah what am i doing romeo alpha victor okay i'm gonna put it there choose the first one and i'm gonna go the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put uh, a distance of 13 dme now that's going to draw a nice little blue circle which is 13 DME. So as long as the aircraft is right on that ring, I know for sure I'm 13 miles. I also have my DME down here telling me exactly where I am and what I'm doing. So the aircraft passed Ginnock and now it's making its way to Delta 300 Mike, maintaining that nice little curve of 13 DME around the uh, around the uh, airfield uh, around the Russell KMO VOR we're at 2100 and maintaining so that's looking good as well we're a little bit uh, we're a little bit towards the west of the airfield but uh, yeah so far so good so on to this making sure the aircraft stays steady on that DME and as you can see, when you when you go manage, you just have to make sure the waypoints you want and the constraints you want are programmed into the box and the aircraft will do it for you pretty much manually. So that's, that is that is so simple, all right? And uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is once I initiate a go around, I'm gonna show you how to put these waypoints in manually, all right? Instead of Genok and all these things, I'll show you how to make these uh, these these points manually in the FMC, which I don't think I've done before, so that would be something new to follow. All right, we're on the arc, maintaining a perfect 13 DME away from um, from the Rosakema VOR, which is right over there.
aircraft is slowing down I'm about 26 truck miles away so I don't need to think about any uh, I don't need to concern myself with the cons with the uh, configuration as of right now but as we approach the D300 mic VOR you can see that it's still maintaining a perfect 13 DME which is which is what we want Super easy when you do it managed. <laughs> That's how much the Airbus takes care of you guys. Now at at this waypoint, Delta 300 Mike, the aircraft should go into its next constraint, which is 2000 at EGMAP. There we go. Next altitude is 2000, it's descending down to it. And we're still maintaining a perfect 13 DME. We're now heading out towards EGMAP where we have to be at 2000. And the aircraft is gonna go ahead and just establish itself. Everything good. We're at 19 DME away from uh, touchdown, track miles. So pretty soon I can, start, uh, the, I can start configuring and getting ready for it. And if you see that circle that I drew, it's maintaining that circle absolutely perfectly. By the way, the manual waypoints that I was talking about are called PBDs, Place Bearing Distance Points, all right? Manual waypoints, in other words, okay? And you'll see that very soon uh, in the rest of this video. All right, getting close to 2000. All right, we're 15 DME from touchdown. We're 15 track miles, so go in flaps one. And as I approach EGMAP, I'll get the aircraft to do its descent. I'll get the aircraft to do the descent down to 1800, which I've already dialed in. And uh, basically, I'll just arm the approach and have the aircraft go down in and do the approach. What are you shouting about? Sorry, guys. My my T20 is a little temperamental today for some reason. Really? Why? Never mind. Flaps 1 is selected. We're now going to go ahead and descend down to 1,800. I can give the aircraft flaps 2. And I'm going to arm the approach. There we go. Speed final approach. And basically the rest is history. The aircraft now knows what to do. It's going to do the, uh, the, the, the descent and the approach. Gears coming down. Flaps 3. And once I pass... Uh, Nomdi, I'm basically going to go ahead and um, uh, set the go-around altitude and uh, that's pretty much all I have to do and the aircraft will take me down to minimums where I will disconnect and hand fly the aircraft down to the ground but I'm not gonna do that just yet because I still have to show you how to do this manually selected so um, yeah let's uh, let's just keep that monitoring here we go, aircraft's nicely following its final approach. So I can go ahead now, and I'm gonna go ahead and set 4,000 for our go around. Flaps are full, landing checklist, ECAM memo, landing no blue, checklist is completed. It's got, we've got the runway inside, the aircraft is maintaining. All right, eight miles, we wanna be 1828, 7 miles, 1512. So at 7 miles, I'll just do a quick cross check just to make sure the aircraft is doing what it's supposed to be doing. As of right now, I pretty much don't have to do anything. I've got the aircraft fully configured, ready for landing, gears down, everything set. 
uh, all I have to do now is basically just you know, sit here and monitor <laughs> which is one of the things about the Airbus it's not an aircraft you fly it's an aircraft you manage so that doesn't make you any less of a pilot and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise it just means you have the the way you fly this aircraft is different from a Boeing or a Bombardier or whatever aircraft you fly all right so this is how Airbus does things and personally I like it <laughs> All right, coming up on 8.3 miles. Gonna start its descent very soon as well. Here we go, aircraft stepping down and starting its descent down. Seven miles, we wanna be one five, one two. Seven miles and we're slightly above but not by much so we're okay six miles we want to be one one nine or six you can see the aircraft increasing its rate of descent to catch up with the vertical profile here comes six miles one one nine or six we're pretty much there like less than 50 feet above it which is nothing for us so that's looking good guys and there's our runway we can literally disconnect and hand fly but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna initiate a go around and we're gonna do the rest of the uh, procedures so let's go Toga man Toga SRS go around track go around flaps selected flaps 3 we've got a positive rate of climb gear up we've got F speed in there we can go flaps 1 now Flaps one is selected. And we're just gonna let the aircraft go ahead and come back to the hold and then we're going to program this in nicely for the rest of the uh, tutorial. All right, get back to you guys when I'm at the uh, VOR. All right guys, we're back up at 4,000 feet and we're about to start our turn towards the VOR and going back into our hold. But now I wanna go ahead and program in those waypoints manually. All right, so what I want to do is after Rasakimo VOR, uh, I'm going to I'm going to basically I'm going to remove Eggman, I'm going to remove Nomdi, I'm going to remove everything. All right, I'm just going to keep the runway in there. Okay, and what I want to do now is I want to put after the Rasakimo VOR, I want to place a manual waypoint. So the to to create a waypoint. You need a reference point, you need a, a, a radial, and you need a distance. Okay, that's how you do that. So the first one is Genok. All right. Now I could always go in here and choose Genok from here, but I don't want to do that. I want to do it manually, hardcore. All right. So the 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 way to do that is to take the Rasakimo VOR, which is RAV. Now Genok sits. At a, at a radial of 235 degrees, 13 miles out. So I put Russell Kimo VOR, put a slash. I'm gonna put 235, which is the radial. And then I'm gonna put um, the distance, which is 13 DME. And I'm gonna put it right there after the, the point I want it to be, right there. And I'm gonna choose RAV, the first one. Now, as you can see, it's created that point over there. I don't know if you can see it clearly. PBD 01, right over there, which is exactly where Genok would be. All right? So, PBD 01, place bearing distance 01, and I insert that. And there is the first one, okay? So, now I need to create this arc, all right? Now, we, we're going to go in segments to create the arc manually around this circle right here. We need to go in increments of 10 DME, all right? So 235, I'm going to go 245, all right? So I'm going to come back down here again, and I'm going to put RAV slash 245 slash 13, and I'm going to put it right underneath that. And select the Rasakimo VOR. Look at that there. 
Now just 10 miles after the first one, we have a second one and it's keeping with the arc. All right, now I'm gonna insert, I'm gonna create another one, which is RAV slash 255 slash 13. And I'm gonna confirm Rust came over you are. Look at that. You see that? We are now creating manual waypoints all the way along that 13 DME arc. Next one would be, so that was 255. So now I'm gonna go RAV slash 265 slash 13. Put it right beneath that. Put that there. And there we go. There's the PBD04, the next waypoint. I'm gonna cycle that up. Now the next one. We did uh, 255, didn't we? Or did we do 265? That was 265, right? So now we're gonna go RAV slash 275 slash 13. And I'm gonna put it right underneath that, select. And there we go, another waypoint. Now I'm gonna go again, RAV slash 285 slash 13. Put it beneath that, select that. Look at that, we've created our waypoints, okay? Now 285, now I'm gonna go again, RAV slash 2905 slash 13. What do you need that? Now I've reached all those waypoints over there. But now look at the next, the next point is a point which is where the Delta 300 mic used to sit. And that's at a radial of 300. Okay, I've already got 295 in there. So I want three, uh, I want 300, right? So what I'm gonna do now is, because it's just so close by, I'm just gonna go ahead and insert it, all right? So, RAV slash 300 slash 13, put it there. And right next to it, you're gonna get the next waypoint right over there maintaining that 13 dme now i'm going to continue on with this with with this format okay rav slash now 310 slash 13 then i'm going to go rav slash 320 slash 13 yeah, 320 RAV slash 330 slash 13. Now once you get to the 330, looking at the looking at the chart, we have another one which is 335. Okay? 335 and then inbound. Okay? So at 335 is when we're gonna start the intercept towards uh, towards not me all right so what I want to do is I'm gonna go RAV slash 335 slash 13 put it there and I'm gonna select that okay now I'm gonna go insert and then from there I'm gonna go to NODMI not me insert that there uh, for some reason it did not accept it Hmm. Never mind. That's okay. What I can do is I can put the reciprocal in there. For some reason, it didn't, it didn't quite accept that uh, that waypoint. But as you can see, I've manually created all these waypoints exactly where I want them. And basically, from 335, I can I can intercept the Rasekema VOR from 163 manually. So that also works for me. So what I can do is I can literally go R A. V. Ah, I'll do this. All right. I'm gonna come down here, and just beneath that one there, I'm gonna go R A V slash the reciprocal of one six three would be three four three three four three slash thirteen. Put that there. And just like that, there's my next waypoint. And then from there, it's intercepting 
uh, the Rusty Kim of VR. <laughs> so that's pretty much how we do that, guys. And now all we got to do is basically come back to the direct two point, choose the first one, which is which is going to be Papa. Uh, let me see, zero one, zero three. Okay, there we go. The first one right there. It's gonna create that intercept right over there. Actually, no, I want to select the zero one. Okay, so it's gonna take us right over there, and I'm going to insert it. And now the aircraft is going to go, and it's going to fly right along that 13 DME point. Now I want to descend down to 2100, which is right over there, 2100. Aircraft is now descending, trust idle open descent, 2100 in blue because it's all managed. And I can keep my speed up, I'll keep it at about two, uh, 210 knots or whatever. And if you look carefully, you can see the aircraft is now making its way to the 001 and onwards and it's going to follow that arc right along until we get right there in front and then we can arm the localizer and we're in okay so if you guys are not able to choose genak or the actual waypoints directly from uh from the fmc this is how you create uh these waypoints manually using a reference point all right so that's that's how we do that and now the other way we can do this is if I was to do this completely manually, fully manually, all right, what I want to do is I would basically bring the VOR page in, okay? Now I know in manage mode, the aircraft is going to follow those waypoints that I, that I programmed in. 100% sure that's going to happen. But what if I wanted to, what if I wanted to make sure that the aircraft is doing it and I'm doing it selectively, manually? So I come to the RATNAV page and I'm gonna put 235 in there. The first one, okay, 235. Yeah, which is 235, 235 there, 235, okay. So now I've got 235 right there, all right? So all I have to do now is make sure that I go track FPA, pull, and now I wanna bring that needle in. So to pull the needle in, it is outbound, right? So then the, the arrow should be pointing away to, towards my back. I'm just gonna go a couple of degrees to the left. I'm at 230 degrees right now, descending to 2100. And I'm gonna make sure the aircraft maintains that, uh, that point. As that needle comes in, let me show you how we do this. <laughs> and we're keeping, a, we're keeping a close eye on our DME, all right? Speed all star, we're coming up on 2100. So as you can see, the VOR and that trajectory of 235, the radial of 235, nicely line up, coming back to 235, just to maintain it. And we're gonna stay here for 13 miles. Now this is how we're going to do a manual selected selected DME arc, all right? All right, so we're just gonna wait until the aircraft reaches 13 DME. And at 13 DME, I'll show you what we have to do. There's 10, there's the desert, a few clouds and some haze, but let's focus right here. 11 DME now. All right, now as we get to about 12.5, I'm gonna start the turn 90 degrees, all right, to the right. Okay, 13, starting that turn. I wanna maintain 13 DME, so I'm gonna go literally 90 degrees. Okay. 
and now I'm gonna put 300 over there so now I've set a radial of 300 and all I have to do to maintain 13 dME I've gone out a little bit 14 miles all right so I can literally pull it in all you have to do is keep the VOR needle at your 90 literally at your three o'clock position it's literally that simple and you will maintain a 13 dme also arc right around that vor because as we as we go along the arc the view the direction of the vor is going to keep changing so you literally will just make small movements following along I can come in a little bit more. In fact, I'm going to come in a little bit more steeper, closer to the VOR. Maintaining 2100. Now I put 300 as a reference because that's when I know I'll be at the at the uh, D300 mic point. So, going to come in a little bit more just to close the distance a little bit and then I'm going to come back to 90 degrees. So I want to reduce this. So I'll come in a little bit more. As you can see, the DME is getting less. There's 14. I can come in a little bit more. Just reduce this and then I want to keep this right at my 90. three o'clock position There we go, keeping the VOR on our 3 o'clock at all times, we're about 13.8 miles and, and getting lower. Gonna activate the approach phase now and I'm gonna go ahead and give us flaps 1, do a nice little early stabilize. We are 3.6, three, coming up on 3.5. So I'm gonna go back, so here's the 90, right? So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go about there now. Keep it nice to a 3 o'clock position of the VOR. And eventually, the arrows and this will cross over. So we're just 13.2 miles. We're pretty much right on that DME arc. Now, as you can see, it's moving. And we just want to keep giving little increments on our track just to maintain but look at that the needles moving in which means very soon we're going to be at the D300 mic it's gonna cross over and then I'm gonna put my next one which is going to be 335 I'm gonna keep that on standby as soon as I cross over constantly making small changes on the track just to make sure that the aircraft is staying 90 degrees on the 3 o'clock of that VOR keeping that VOR exactly where we want it. There we go, we'll cross right over. 120, we can go 030. And I'm literally going in small increments. Now I'm gonna put the 335 in there. And when the 335 and this match up, then I'll know it's time to start my descent. Now I can go down to 2000 and descend because I crossed the Delta 300 mic point. And at any given time, I do not want this numbers to increase by too much. So I'm gonna pull it in and make sure the aircraft stays where it should be. As 
as the arrow and the and the radial get close together the needle is going to come alive and then we're pretty much going to be good to go on our approach Awesome. Right over the coastline. All right, we have reduced the DME back to 13.5. We can come in a little bit more. And here it comes, needles alive. We're about to cross the 335. So I'm gonna put 163 on standby. Look at that, right on that DME arc, fully selected. Here comes the crossover. We cross that, now it's time to go 163. So I'm gonna start the turn Put 163 in there, there we go, and place the hat right on top of that needle, following it in as accurately as we can. Go in flaps too, and gonna descend down to 1800, and select it. Constantly making our turn, line it up with that 163 inbound. At 8.9 miles, we're gonna start our descent. And if all goes well, we should see a runway in front of us. All right, making the turn, speed all star, we've got 1800. And just gonna keep it offset just a little bit, just to pull that needle in as accurately as we can. Okay, there's eight, 1800. Needle is pretty much almost in the middle. You can bring the aircraft in a little bit more. We're at 160 degrees, almost at 163. Needle is almost perfectly centered. We're gonna set 163 now. And now I'm gonna go ahead and push FPA zero in anticipation for the descent. Gonna get the gear down, go flaps three. We're now maintaining a perfect 163 inbound towards the runway. 8.9 we're gonna start our descent because it says 7.9 but we want to start about a mile earlier just to make sure the aircraft you know starts its descent and stays on the profile so as you can see guys we've maintained that arc we were out by we were out by one nautical mile and a little bit came back in maintained but we never crossed in we never broke okay 8.9 Gonna dial 3.0 on the uh, FPA. There we go, minus 3.0, aircraft is descending. Flaps full, landing checklist is completed. And we're heading straight down. And look at that guys, runway in, is the runway is in sight. And we're just gonna make sure, gonna set the go around altitude of 4,000. And now our first check comes at seven miles, one, five, one, two. Here's 7.5. So we're slightly low, no worries. At seven miles, we're one, five, one, two. We are at one, three, one, three, nine. So I can reduce it to 2.5. All right, just a little bit, just to reduce the rate of descent. Six miles, we want to be one, one, nine or six. Here's 6.5 DME. Slightly low again, we're gonna maintain 2.5. Okay, six miles, one, one zero, five. eight, zero. Very close, nothing to cry about. Five miles, 880. So that's 5.5. Looks like we're gonna catch up with our profile. 5.2, 5.1, 5 5.0, right on the numbers, so we can go back to minus 3.0 and maintain it from there. 
beautiful. Four miles and we want 564. There's 4.5 miles. There's a runway. 4.4. Everything's looking good. And you can see now why I love. Okay, four miles, five, six, four, just 30 above. Guys, and that's it. And that is how four. you do selected, selected on a DME arc, guys. Gonna go for another go around. Let's go around flaps. 300. Mantoga SRS, go around track. Aircraft's climbing the way, positive rate, gear up. We've got F speed, flaps one, and we're climbing away, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how you do BOR approaches, managed and selected. And that, my friends, is how you do a DME arc. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something from it. If there's anything you didn't understand in the video, let me know. I'll be happy to explain it uh, in more detail in the comments below. But other than that, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of the channel. God bless every single one of you. And bye-bye.